Well, we seem only to do videos together where there's something really disastrous happening. And well, this one's good, isn't it? There's a, there's a new bug. It's, it's a good one. Yeah, it's my favourite favorite kind of bug, which is a security issue. And also it involves image file formats. That's my favourite yeah. kind of bug. And you could almost say it's not a bug at all. So the problem that we're looking at today has been termed Acropolis, um, and it involves the PNG file format. But really, it's sort of we can expand it a bit to actually think about how people create files. In particular, when you've got an existing file and you want to update it, um, how do you actually do that in a way that's secure? And in this case, doesn't leave all the old data lying around for people to find. Mike, do you want to sort of talk us through it? Yeah, some researchers, um, Simon Ahrens and David Buchanan, have found this essentially proof of concept that um, initially on Pixel phones, when you take a screenshot, which we, which we all do a lot, so you go, you go into your phone, you go screenshot, and then maybe you crop it to the bit you're interested in, or indeed to hide something you're not interested you in. You just bought something on eBay and yeah. you want to make sure that people don't see your address, how much you paid for it, that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, so you crop the image down, you send it off on whatever messaging app or you put it on Discord or wherever it is you're using. What's happened is, on a Pixel phone, when they write the new screenshot, the cropped screenshot over the original file to send out, they don't delete the original file data. When you first capture the screenshot, it's saved onto the phone's disk. You then crop it down because you don't want all the image to be shown, and it saves over that same file but it leaves quite a lot of the original data intact. Now, what it should do, of course, is delete most of the original data, or indeed all of the original data, uh, and have only the small image, which is what we wanted to send out, but that isn't what's happening. But that probably depends on how you save it, because obviously if you save a copy of the file, then you're gonna be generating a new one because you've got the original as well. Probably need to test that. Do we know any victim with a Pixel phone, Sean? So perhaps we'll have a quick look, and so you can roughly see how a PNG uh, file is structured, and, then, and why this has caused a problem. So it's probably worth saying while Mike's getting ready that a PNG file exists because, you, I mean, there's two main file formats that are used for images on the web, sort of not vector images, but sort of bitmap images. You've got JPEG, which are good for sort of real images, photographs and things, and PNG, which is good for synthetic images because you can compress them really well without losing any quality. Um, if you try to use JPEG for that sort of image, you would end up with artifacts. If you try to use PNG for real world images, they wouldn't compress that well, so it's probably worth saying that. So actually, this bug is kind of simple when you look at it. So when you have a PNG file, which is your original screenshot that's been saved on the disk, and this is going to have, at the top, a header, right? then it's going to have all your pixel data, right? and then at the bottom, it's going to have what we call an I end block, uh, chunk. And this end says to the thing that's reading the PNG file, there is no more PNG file, stop reading there. And one of the nice things about having this I end chunk on the end is that then if you accidentally have other data, it gets ignored and you don't have a situation where you're showing weird bits of image underneath and more artifacts, right? So it's, it's sort of for robustness. Now what's happened is the app has gone in, cropped the image down to a much smaller one, which takes up less space in memory, and then overwritten it onto this file, but it's left the rest of this file intact because it's not truncated the file. So if I take a different color, which is our new cropped image, we have a header at the top, and the file sort of takes up, let's say, this much room, and it has another I end here, like this. So this is our new image saved over our old image, and you can see that quite a lot of the old image is still here. So how do we get at it? Well, what David Buchanan has done is he's written a proof of concept that gets rid of this new image that we already know because we can see it, and then tries to go from here and reconstruct the PNG without the original header, which is very difficult to do. And presumably, we need to know some information about the actual image to start with, things like the width and height, yeah. otherwise we've got there no are, hope at all. There are ways to estimate you know, what kind of dimensions the thing had, but of course, a much easier way is to know the model of phone that had the bug because they capture at a specific resolution. So you put in your model of phone, and then you know that the image is this wide and this high, and then we can trot down through these different rows of data until we get to the second eye end, which shouldn't ever be there, and reconstruct the image. It doesn't work perfectly because this is also compressed. Right? PNG has various compression mechanisms. So they have row-level filters 
but first of all try and make each row take up less memory. They then have LZ and Huffman trees that also encode the data. And so the uh, top... I think we did a computer file on that. We've, well, we've done a computer file Dave's on that at least many, many, many years ago. Dave's done great videos on LZ and Huffman encoding. And so essentially what your, your process here is, we don't necessarily have the initial compressed data. So maybe we're missing a Huffman tree or something like this. We have to find one and then we can compress, decompress from this point. And you may still get artifacts because LZ compression likes to look back at previous data and maybe that data has been overwritten. So for a while you'll get some nonsense and some issues with PNG filters and then suddenly enough data will be there but it all starts to turn out okay and lots of your image turns back up. What you might find then is that we send a message that's been cropped and then you can uncrop it and recover all the other messages that have been sent from that phone as well. Oh, so this is like when I told you we were filming on Friday? That's the one, yeah. I think I'm going to have to have words with Mike after this. Is I think now at this point, Steve, maybe a good thing to talk about is why on earth this bit wasn't deleted. Right? Yeah, so I mean, I think actually, before we get there, one thing to, that really helps with this is that the PNG file format breaks things down into 16 kilobyte chunks. And if you think about the amount of data that's in a modern Pixel phone's image, very quickly you're going to start a new 16k chunk and then all the compression is going to start again and so you then got a point where you can get the data if you know the width and height when we send these things out over twitter facebook other messaging systems are available in general they will re-encode the file they'll do some sort of filtering on it because these files not only contain the image they often contain what's called the exif data which contains things like what make of camera was this taken with when was it taken, the GPS coordinates of when it was taken, and thankfully, Facebook and Twitter have realized that that's probably not data that you want to be publicly available. If I have a really expensive, nice new camera, and it's at this exact location if you want to come and steal it. And I'm now just posted that I'm on holiday, etc. I mean, it's worth mentioning, the reason that this hasn't flagged up is that when the PNG file format was created back in the mid 90s, it wasn't uncommon and other file formats and other programs have will cope with this. So extra data to get on the beginning or the end, which is why you've got that specific I end header so that they will ignore what's coming afterwards. So actually it is generating a perfectly valid PNG because if you look at the spec, it doesn't say anything about ignoring data or processing data that comes after it. We've reached the end of the file. It says it's the end of the file. We don't do anything else. So this is why I said it, you might want to class it as a bug because actually it's generating a perfectly valid PNG. Of course, it's a really nasty problem from a security point of view because we're sending a file which we think we've cropped out yep. useful information or information you didn't want me to see, but actually it's still there. And so I can load it into David's tool or Simon's tool and see what you're saying about me behind my back. Yep. That's right. The, I, mean, I, I mean, this is the point, I suppose, is that PNG has been very good at hiding this problem for many years. Suppose I had a text document and I accidentally wrote over the top half and not the bottom half and didn't delete the bottom half, it would be very obvious because you'd read your document and you'd say, well, okay, there's a whole another half a document here that shouldn't be there. I need to fix a bug in my code that's, that's written out this file in the wrong way. PNG has the exact same problem, but because of its IN header, no one's ever noticed it, or at least no one's noticed it for a few years, at least that we know of. So as far as we know, the first person to discover it is Simon Evans, yeah. who was sending a file and just wait, notice, wait a minute, I just cropped this file and it hasn't changed size. Still five megabytes long, but it's only sort of 16 pixels by 16 pixels or whatever it was that he'd done. Yeah, why is that still five megabytes? Of course, you then start investigating uh, and you suddenly find, oh dear. When you're writing software and you've got a file that you want to update, you have to specify how you want to open that. So you can open it for reading, in which case you can read data from it. You can open it for writing and you can open it for read and write at the same time, simplifying things. If you open it for writing though, where do you want that data to go? You could have it so it's always appended to the end of the file. You could have it so it overwrites what's currently in that file. Or you could say, I want to actually completely obliterate or truncate what's already in that file and then just rewrite things over the, as if it was a completely blank file. And what seems to have happened here, particularly with the issue on Pixel phones, is that the default has changed. I think it was in Android 10 or Android 11. They default, the default changed from being you truncated to being you overwrote. Don't want to scare people too much, but there's quite a possibility that there's other programs that are doing this because this default has changed. 
I don't think this will be the end of this. I think we'll see similar things. It's, no, it's, it's fascinating, actually, because we should note that basically what happened was if this was noticed in Pixel phones, the proof of concept came out, and then almost immediately someone was messing around with other PNGs from the Windows snipping yeah. tool and found the exact same, totally different cores, totally different operating system, yeah. same bug, right? It's almost impossible this doesn't exist. And, and, and in some cases, it, it's actually by design. Um, there are file formats, uh, PDF documents that spring to mind, where you actually can update the document by appending something to the end of it. And that appending can say, for example, only show pages one, two, three, and five. This isn't a new problem, this has been seen before, but I think the big problem here is that we have assumptions about what happens when we crop something. The question now really is what, what, do, what do we do about it, right? Now, so what's happened in the short term is that Google have are rolling out patches to Android. Microsoft Android. have patched it. Microsoft have patched it very, very quickly, so good job for them. And the um, authors of the bug, so David and Simon, have, um, have obviously been publicizing this. Now, some people have said, well, you know, is it, is it a safe thing to release a proof of concept tool? But actually, this is a really interesting kind of bug because yeah. in some sense, patching it just stops it from being a problem in the future. Yeah. You've already got five years yeah. of images that could possibly be uncropped with hidden data in just on the internet now. On the internet, on people's hard drives, on people's, on hard people's phones. And we don't know where they are. Th this right? data, it still exists. And, and actually, I mean, it's worth saying, we, we mentioned them on people's hard drives on the state. When you, even if this did it properly, for want of a better way of putting it, you'd probably find that if you had physical access to the hard disk, you could do exactly the same thing because when you create a new file, the old data isn't necessarily overwritten, it's just marked as unused. And it's only when the trim is run on SSD or something overwrites it on a hard disk that that data gets obliterated. And the unfortunate thing is, unless we develop tools that iterate over all the images, let's say on, on all the images on a Discord server or all the images in some... And look for double yeah. IN. And even that is potentially... Because it, it's not infeasible that IEND could appear as a valid compressed data uh, in the within the image. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting going forward. So I think in the short term, you know, the patches are coming out. It means that from now on, when you crop an image down, it's actually going to get cropped and saved that way on a disk. But, you know, if you've saved a lot of images across the internet and they've not necessarily been re-encoded and it's never quite clear who's re-encoding and who is just yeah. sending the image. I suspect messaging tools will probably do it with images, but not with files because they're probably sending images in a slightly different way. We know WhatsApp, for example, re-encodes video. If you had a zip of files, yeah, it's, exactly. not going to it's not going to re-encode all the images within that zip, almost certainly not. It's just going to send a zip file. Simon, one of the authors, is working on a tool now that will hopefully iterate over images and tell, tell people whether or not this bug exists for them. Yeah. Some people will do that, some people won't, and we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Are we calling this Acropolis Now? Though? Acropolis Now, for sure. And then we Acropolis can re now. We'll, and we'll pose for the movie. What's the sort of pose on the movie poster? Sort of a, and yeah, then you can make me red. Yeah. Let's for it and release it yourself. So um, there are two primitives here. One's called malloc, and malloc says, give me some quantity of memory.